G'day YouTube, Brad Prepping here. Hope you're all having a good day. And I hope those of you that might be in New South Wales or, or Queensland didn't wake up in the dark. Because uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today is the uh, said lack of electricity or shortfall in electricity in uh, New South Wales and Queensland at the moment. It uh, came out sort of late last night in the news um, through mainstream media uh, that um, there's a shortfall in electricity, the availability of electricity in New South Wales and Queensland. Um, I've got an article here, I'm just gonna uh, read a little bit from, it's just a nine news uh, article. I know, mainstream media, boo. But, you know, usually they're not lying, if you like, about this sort of stuff, because, uh, you know, everything's sunshine and, uh, and lollipops until it isn't. So if mainstream media is saying that there's a shortfall in electricity, then I'm inclined to believe it. Uh, and it doesn't surprise me anyway. Um, so this article starts off, it just says that the East Coast electricity grid will come under a strain again on Tuesday after the Australian Energy Market Operator, or AEMO, stepped in to order electricity generators online to prevent blackouts on Monday evening. A, uh, the AEMO is predicting an energy shortfall demand exceeding with, with demand exceeding reserve supply in both Queensland and New South Wales on Tuesday night. So they're predicting a shortfall in energy for Tuesday night, which is tonight, the 14th of June, uh, 2022 in New South Wales and Queensland. The article goes on to say uh, they predict uh, the problem could spread to other states with uh, the operator watching whether automatic energy price caps triggered late Monday in Victoria and South Australia will affect supply. On Monday, AEMO said that there was plenty of physical generation capacity in Queensland, but power generation had reduced their availability, sorry, power generators had reduced their availability thanks to the price cap limiting costs of $300 per megawatt hour. So basically what's happened is the price of producing electricity for the power providers, the producers has increased. And in Australia, apparently we have a a default level if you like where if the uh, price to produce a megawatt hour of power goes above $300 um, it is limited at $300. Funnily enough that sounds like price control and what happens generally in most cases with price control well if you start to limit the amount something can be sold for then generally if it, it, especially if it's costing more to produce that product than what you can sell it for, people start producing less of it. The, the demand goes up and the supply comes down. And that's exactly what happened here. As soon as they hit that $300 limit, um, power generators, providers, started limiting the availability or the amount that they were generating because it wasn't worth uh, their time and effort to do so. They were losing money. So just as a side note, this is basically, like I said, uh, price control on electricity. Just think about what might happen if that ever happens with food or uh, you know, petrol even, you know, uh, gas and fuel uh, and other resources that we need on a daily basis. Um, you know, we already see what's happened uh, in Australia with lettuce um, in one of my previous videos. Um, I'll put a card up, up here. Um, the, the price of lettuce has just tripled at least um, in the last few weeks, couple of weeks, because, and this was because of floods that occurred that, that destroyed crops. But as soon as that, that supply amount goes down, the, the demand is still there and may even increase, but then the price has to go up. So, you know, sure, they capped it at 300 megawatt hours and, and that's great, but the fact is that now, compounding to the original problem of already having a lack of power, power generators are just saying, well, we're just gonna give you enough to get by. We're not gonna produce any more power than we need to, we absolutely need to, to keep the lights on basically. So 
there's no room for error here. There's no room for a power plant to uh, suffer a fa failure or a breakdown and, and uh, be offline for a time. Um, if that happens, then parts of New South Wales and Queensland will be in the dark. The article continues, the AEMO spokesperson uh, called the potential power shortage a unique situation, adding international gas prices influenced by global tensions had contributed to the price spike. Well, at the moment, it may be considered a unique situation, but I believe that this will become a more regular thing uh, in the future. I don't believe that we're going to have the steady or relatively steady and stable power that we've had in previous years. And, you know, it, it isn't just one thing that's, that's happened that's caused this. There's a lot of things going on at the moment that uh, may well have contributed to it. Uh, but I, I don't see this personally as a unique situation. I, I feel like we're going to, in parts of Australia, certain areas we're going to be experiencing, um, you know, potentially rolling blackouts, brownouts, or just, you know, um, lack, lack of power in general. Um, so I, I, I'd be expecting this to not really get any better anytime soon. So what happens when, uh, the system fails and there's not enough power to go around or there's shortfalls and deficits, well, it falls back to the people, doesn't it? It falls back to us to pick up the pieces, to be the good people that, you know, change our lives and reduce our living standards here in Australia in the middle of winter of all times. Uh, you know, as the article goes on, it says Queensland residents have been urged to conserve power between peak hours of 5pm uh, and 8.30pm and 8am on Tuesday morning in case of potential blackouts. So that's, that's the way you solve this problem. It's not by producing uh, more power, it's not by, you know, mining more coal or having more power plants or other possible ways of producing power in place. Uh, no, it's by everyone else reducing their power usage to compensate for the screw-ups of our economy and our government. So this this leads me really, I guess, to the, uh, you know, once you get all the doom and gloom out the way, uh, what can you do about this? Well, the, the simple answer is that obviously with regards to our power and the availability of our power, none of us can do anything about it. It is what it is. If the lights go out, the lights go out. Um, but what can you control? Well, the, the best and I guess the simplest and, and quickest and easiest uh, option is to get um, a, a petrol generator or a diesel generator of some sort. Um, it's not the, that's not the best option, but it's probably the cheapest to purchase uh, for the capacity you're gonna get. Um, you know, here in Australia, I've, I've got my generator, which I'll do a video on soon. Um, it's just a Gentrax generator from Outbacks uh, in Australia. Um, it's Chinese, it's not anything terribly expensive. It cost me, I think, less than $800, but it will run pretty much everything I need to, uh, if the power goes out, I can run all my fridges, freezers, uh, charge uh, electronics and run computers and TVs and stuff. So, you know, it, there's, uh, there's that option and they, they have uh, obviously generators of smaller capacities than mine uh, and much cheaper. I think their uh, cheapest one, about an 800 watt generator is uh, around 400 or so dollars, which is pretty good, which 800 watts will be able to run most standard fridge freezers. Um, but you do want to check your uh, starting watts um, or surge of your uh, fridge. That'll be the probably the hungriest uh, uh, piece of equipment that you'll have to run and that you'll want to run in a grid down situation. So there's obviously petrol. Now, the, um, the problems with petrol, obviously, just quickly, are uh, it produces noise, it relies on fuel, uh, which fuel is now more expensive in Australia here in Melbourne, where it uh, anywhere between $2.10 and $2.25 a litre on average. Um, so that's, uh, that's something to take into consideration. It's going to cost you money to run the generator. Uh, fuel is essentially finite, um, and, and there may be shortages or outages and you may not be able to get it. Um, 
and then uh, yeah, it's noisy as well. You know, depending on where you are in your situation. Um, you know, it may not be appropriate. You might be in an apartment sort of uh, situation. So that's when you can move to things like solar and there's plenty of other options out there for solar. Uh, again, solar's a bit more expensive usually, uh, but it's renewable and you know, you're able to keep going probably for a longer period of time. But you know, everything has its pros and cons. But it, at least if you have something, you have a generator, a petrol generator, a diesel generator, a solar generator, you got something to, let's say at the bare minimum, keep your main fridge going, um, charge up your electronics, you know, maybe run a computer if you need to work or something, uh, yeah, put some lights on, some basic lights, uh, that sort of thing. So that, that's what you're looking at is running the basics. And we're not talking about the end of the world scenario here. We're talking about this situation, I guess, and where there could be rolling blackouts. You might not have power for three or four hours or a day or two or something like that. Um, so you're just trying to fill in those gaps with these, uh, you know, alternative power options. Um, so this is a wake up call guys. Things aren't getting any easier. Our power systems are failing. We are struggling to keep up with demand. Um, it, which really boggles my mind because Australia is such a resource rich country. We, ha we export so much coal and gas yet we're running out of it and our power plants are getting shut down or not maintained because there's this belief that we're moving to renewable energies, but we're not. And I don't know how they're going to make that jump without overcompensating in a large way for it because there is no way to jump from coal and gas powered turbine energy to solar, wind, hydro straight away. You need to basically hybrid your system like a hybrid car. You got petrol and you got your battery pack. And that's in my, in my opinion, I'm not an electrical expert, but there is no way to jump from fossil fuels to renewable without going through a very long process of building that up. So I'm not sure honestly what the plans are in Australia. I don't think anyone really has a plan uh, to, you know, get our electrical system to a good standard um, or to maintain it at a good standard. Uh, but we'll see what happens in the future. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to bring this to your attention, give you some thoughts and some ideas on what you can do to prepare yourself and your family uh, in the event that you lose power, especially in Australia now, like I said, it's winter. So um, there's also another video uh, that I did recently on a small uh, butane heater that I got, which um, you may want to look at. I'll put another card up here. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys have a good day and we'll talk to you later.